In this video, I'm going to teach you how to get round 100 on Forsaken. This is the first in a series of videos where I'll be going through as many maps as I can, teaching you how to get to round 100. So if you aren't already, this is the perfect chance for you to subscribe. I'll be uploading lots of videos in the near future that will teach you how to get better at Call of Duty Zombies. Now, before you can start playing this strategy, you need to have Aether Shroud upgraded to at least Tier 3, ideally Tier 5. Additionally, I recommend that you upgrade your perks to Tier 5, especially Quick Revive. The reason for this will be explained a little bit later. On this map, you'll need to spawn in with Aether Shroud, like I mentioned before, and any weapon of your choice. I typically recommend a shotgun for quick and easy killing. When you first spawn in, start getting some kills and make your way over to the teleporter as soon as possible. The early rounds on this game kind of play themselves because all you're going to do is follow the steps to unlock Pack-a-Punch. Once the teleporter is ready, just head on through. At this point, all you're going to be doing is getting kills and building up points until you can make your way to the Pack-a-Punch machine. Once you've gone through a couple rounds, head over to the next teleporter. Once you get into the next area, you want to grab all the parts to build the third teleporter. Continue to open up the map until you get to the final teleporter. It is here that you will encounter your first abomination. Take it out by just spamming him with the weapon that you spawned in with. It will take a little bit of time, but if you need to, you can use your Aether Shroud to help you get out of a bad situation. If you see it start to shoot its beam of electricity, move out of the way immediately, because that is its most deadly attack. Once it's killed, head over to the final teleporter. There is a second, much easier way to kill this abomination. Instead of spawning in with Aether Shroud, spawn in with Ring of Fire, and you're going to use that to help you kill the abomination much faster. Then you can switch to Aether Shroud later. Once you're in the last area, hit the button to finally unlock Pack-a-Punch. At this point, your priority is going to be getting the Ray Gun and the Crystal Axe. My favorite way to get the Crystal Axe is by doing Trials, so I'm going to start with that. For the next chunk of the game, you basically always want to have a trial active until you get your Crystal Axe. Additionally, when you get the chance, you're going to want to hit the Mystery Box five times. This will move the Mystery Box. Moving the Mystery Box will cause Fire Sails to start spawning, and you want this because Fire Sails ignore all of the rarity requirements for the round and make it more likely for you to get Wonder Weapons, including the Ray Gun. Continue working towards your trials until they're at the Legendary tier. If your trial ends, immediately get a new one, and just follow the trial wherever on the map it wants you to go. The rounds are still low enough that all of your weapons should have an easy time killing, but you're going to want to take this time to start getting some perks. Also keep in mind that anytime you get a fire sale, you're going to stop what you're doing to go hit the box and hopefully get the ray gun. Buy any perks you see as you come across them when you feel like you have enough points, and use any opportunities you can to get more armor. Once your reward is at legendary tier, go check to see if it's the Crystal Axe. If it is the Crystal Axe, then you're done doing trials. But if it's not the Crystal Axe, just activate another trial and keep trying until you eventually get it. I have never had to do more than three legendary rewards to get the Crystal Axe. So you should be able to get it pretty quickly. When you start to get into the double digit rounds, if you don't have the Crystal Axe yet, feel free to pack a punch one of your weapons to the first tier. This will help hold you over until you're able to get the Crystal Axe. As you're completing trials, continue to buy any perks that you happen to pass by. The order that you buy the perks does not matter at this stage of the game. Also use any chance you get to make sure that your armor is fully upgraded to tier 3. And remember that in these early rounds, if you ever get stuck, use your Aether Shroud to help you get out. Fast forwarding a little bit, you'll see that in this footage, I got the ray gun on round 17 during a fire sale. If you don't get the ray gun early, you will get the ray gun on round 30. I'll explain that later. Eventually, you will get the Crystal Axe from the Trials. Once you do, it's time to move on to the low round strategy. Make your way over to the secret room where Ronald Raygun is, and use your Aether Shroud to get into that room. This is where we're going to be spending most of the rest of this game. All the way up until round 40, you're going to sit in this corner and just spam your Chrysalax melee attack. 
you should have a relatively easy time staying in this room, and none of the bosses will really be able to do that much damage to you during this period. If you get into any trouble and you're having trouble killing, just pop your Aether Shroud. The Ray Gun can also be used to help you deal with Abominations more easily, which are the strongest boss you'll have to deal with. Eventually, the damage that the Chrysalax does is going to start to drop off. Once that happens, you're going to pack a punch it all the way. Additionally, once you get to round 30, if you don't already have the Ray Gun, you're going to want to save a zombie and hit the box until you get the Ray Gun. This may take a couple of rounds to do, so if you need to, use your Crystal Axe while you're waiting between rounds. Once you eventually get the Ray Gun, save up points and pack a punch it all the way to tier 3. Then grab any remaining perks that you didn't already have and head back to the Ronald Ray Gun room. Until round 40, you're going to be camping with the Chrysalax. After round 40 is when we are going to switch to the high round strategy. At this point, you should have more than enough salvage saved. You're going to want to equip yourself with the Gersh device, Semtexes, and a Flamethrower. You'll also want to get rid of your Chrysalax, replace it with any fully automatic weapon, and equip Shatterblast. The high round strategy is very simple. First, you're going to take out your Flamethrower, point it at this door, and hold down the trigger until it is completely out of ammo. All the zombies that are approaching you should die instantly, as you see here in the footage. Once the flamethrower is about to run out, switch to your Shatter Blast weapon, shoot Shatter Blast, then you're going to turn to the left and activate your Aether Shroud. This Aether Shroud activation will teleport you through the wall. After that, you can jump through the window in front of you, run up to the crafting table, restock on a new flamethrower, run back around into the same room, and repeat. It is as simple as that. On screen, I'm going to leave the footage playing so you can see me do it one more time. Basically, the strategy is you repeating these exact steps over and over again. It is as simple as that. Now, there are two things that can happen that will force you to change the way that you play the strategy. First, let's talk about how we deal with the Disciples. On certain rounds, Disciples will spawn in alongside normal zombies. This will not be every round. When the Disciples spawn in, the strategy remains basically the same, with one key difference. Every time a Disciple spawns in, you're going to want to throw a Semtex or two at the Disciple. This will weaken it greatly, stop them from making the zombies stronger, and then you can use your flamethrower to help you finish killing the disciple. As you can see on screen, I'm throwing a Semtex every time I see a disciple, which sometimes you can see just outside the room by using death perception. Keep in mind that you can throw Semtexes while you are holding down the trigger for the flamethrower. You usually won't have to worry about restocking your Semtexes as you'll be able to pick them up off the ground when you come back into the room when getting a flamethrower. If you notice that you don't have any Semtexes in your inventory, buy them at the same time that you buy the flamethrower as you do the loot. Next, let's talk about how to deal with the Abomination. When the Abomination enters the room you're in, you immediately want to throw down a Gersh device. This will slow down the Abomination, and you're just going to spam it with your Flamethrower. Usually, this will be enough to kill it in one go, but sometimes you'll have to use more than one Gersh device or more than one Flamethrower to get the job done. If that's the case, I recommend you ignore the Abomination, follow the same path you would otherwise, and keep using the Flamethrower and Gersh Device combo until it is eventually killed. Make sure to restock on your Gersh Devices after you're done killing the Abomination. Also keep in mind, all other bosses will not affect the way the strategy is played. As long as there are not Disciples or Abominations on the map, you could just play normally. I also want to quickly address how to deal with insta-kills. The problem with insta-kills is that when they are active, they do not charge your Aether Shroud, so it's a little bit more difficult to run the strategy normally. You can use your Shatter Blast weapon to get you a ton of kills while the insta-kill is active. Once that runs out of ammo in the clip, instead of reloading, switch to your Ray Gun. 
Once that runs out of ammo in the clip, switch back to your main weapon. And pay attention to the insta-kill timer, because as soon as it runs out, you'll just want to pull out the flamethrower and go back to the normal strategy. The last thing I need to discuss is what you should do if you take it down. When you take it down, you need to follow this exact path. First, you're going to use your ray gun to get a kill against a zombie, which will revive you with tier 5 quick revive. Then, activate your ether shroud. Go ahead and grab a flamethrower and any equipment that you're missing. Then make your way to the left and grab more armor. Then you're going to run through this room and buy quick revive again. This will give you another layer of protection in case you take it down in between now and when we get the rest of our perks back. Take the zipline up into the pack-a-punch area, walk through, as you do so by PhD slider, then take the teleporter into the underground area. From here, you're going to make your way to the Wonderfizz machine. When you get to the Wonderfizz machine, throw a Gersh device down and buy back all of your perks. Once you have all your perks, walk the reverse way that you came to go back to the strategy. And it is as easy as that. That is the entire strategy, and that is everything you need to know to be able to get to round 100 on Forsaken. All the footage from this video are from real games that I've played, so if you'd like to see the full unedited footage of me going from round 1 to round 100, I will leave a link down in the description for you to watch that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll be answering as many as I can. And if you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on how to get to round 100 on different maps. If there's a map that you would like to see me cover, feel free to leave that in a comment down below. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.